clips of the week here. Uh, so the first one's around uh, U.S. dollar versus gold correlation and and the fact that it's been breaking down and very bit bullish for gold. So this was from the Macro Show on March 20th and uh, would love to get this rolling. I did notice today, you should have noticed this on uh, GLD correlations. These numbers were uh, important on um, and minus 0 0.47. So on your uh, correlation table, you should have noticed, so this is um, uh, 15 days and 30 days. 15 days and 30 days. So on that table right there, see how it says minus 0.76 and minus 0.47? <clears throat> What's happening is that the, the, the inverse correlation between the dollar and gold is breaking down. That is super bullish, one. Uh, two, expected. That's exactly what I said was going to happen, you know, because... I'm just so brilliant, right? No, that's what happens. When the world realizes that interest rates aren't going up anymore, gold loses its inverse correlation to the dollar. So that was a real important development last week that nobody asked about in the queue. Okay, so that, that's another question that I wanted to ask. Um, didn't get a whole bunch of questions on gold, uh, gold miners and silver, but yes, they both say what they said they say. Okay, so they both say bullish trend, but the process is, again, you're, you're trying to make a 75 foot putt here, Buying at the top end of the range is, 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 is low probability, not good, okay? So wait for it, watch how it behaves. Watch how it behaves on dollar up days because GDX and SLV don't have those same characteristics. They're still very much tied to the dollar. So if the dollar goes up, you could, well, one, you're gonna battle test silver. Silver just got above trend here uh, for the first day in a row. Uh, and you're gonna battle test gold miners. Both of those, the low end of the range, which I publish daily, is below trend. It's a very dangerous place to be making a decision. So again, at this stage of the game, I choose to do nothing. And I think I'm pretty well experienced. I'm not, a, not bad at trading it either. But I choose to do nothing. I choose to get off the Titanic and get into the raft and watch. Okay? So that, for some of you, you never got off in the first place. And all you did was cry about being outside of a raft in big, big waves because you didn't sell. You didn't listen. So you're bag holding. Now you feel good again because your bad decision has gone away and you may, you're not quite sure, right? So it's okay for us all to admit that we don't make the same decisions. But I'm telling you what, like again, back to Peltz's point, I'm telling you how I play my game. You need to understand how you play your game. You need to understand your mins, your minimum size position, your max, buy asset class, they're not all the same. Gold miners trade with a lot more volatility than gold. Okay, one's a currency, one's a stock, or one's an equity allocation. So again, make those good decisions. I've said it throughout the year, but again, make these decisions before you transact, before you get any emotion associated with what you're doing, so that you can stand over what is a very difficult putt by any professional uh, definition that I just read. Standing over a five foot putt requires no emotion, all process. So let's make sure that we do that today. Top end of the range, low end of the range, you know exactly what I'm gonna say when we're at those spots. You know, again, reiterating very succinctly a lot of things that I, I just spoke about here today on, on our episode, but, you know, minus 0. 0.69 on uh, the third day inverse correlation for for gold to USD versus gold. Uh, so these things are breaking down. And and again, you know, Keith, uh, Keith really just hammering home position sizing and the importance of, of knowing, uh, you know, where you are and, and what you have in the portfolio and volatility adjusting accordingly. Yeah.